Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Key Hyundai channel and I've been asked a lot to do a video about Hyundai's Blue Link and Kia Connect, which was formerly known as Yuvo Intelligence. Now, of course, our channel filmed in Canada, so your systems may be a little bit different. Uh, but what I wanna do is sort of open the conversation on this app and how it works. So I happen to own a Hyundai vehicle and a Kia vehicle and my Kia vehicle happens to be an electric vehicle. So what I'm doing here is basically sharing my screen from my phone to this screen, and we're gonna walk through some of the things that you can do. And by no means is this the comprehensive video on this topic. I've actually resisted doing this because it seems like it's changing every now and then, and there's things that I don't always understand right away. But I think what we'll do is we'll just walk through what these systems do to help you out. And then when you have questions, you've got a place in the comment section to uh, talk about it with me, and we'll continue to make more videos from there. So if you've never subscribed to our channel before, we're gonna do a whole bunch of videos like this to help you understand your Kia or your Hyundai vehicles. So feel free to hit the subscribe, subscribe button, and do me a favor, hit that like button. Uh, some of these are tough to do, so I'm hoping that this will spread enough that it becomes uh, something that is worthwhile rather than just going out to 10 people. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start on the Hyundai side. Now, just so we know, um, I happen to have a 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz, and I have a 2020 Kia Soul EV. So we'll talk about some differences. Top left corner, I just clicked that sort of up there. You can customize your photo there if you want. So I took a picture, actually I took a stock Hyundai uh, picture, but you can take your own picture, put it in there to make sort of your own car. And this is kind of your home screen. You've got home, remote services, valet parking mode, which we'll probably not deal with too much. Well, maybe we'll go through it. Uh, final destination guide, basically if you are walking somewhere, you can get walking directions from where you parked to the rest of the way. Find your vehicle, call roadside assistance, vehicle health status, dealer locator, notification center, that kind of thing. And then I could switch vehicles. If I had two Hyundais, I could switch vehicles or two Kias in there as well. The biggest complaint I have with this, and there's nothing we can do about it, so might as well just not even apologize for it. When you use some of these controls, it takes some time. It can take a lot of time. To be fair, it takes more time than I'm comfortable with. But the flip side is it works quite well. So when I start my remote start my vehicle, um, which again, my vehicle's not inside here, so you're just gonna talk about how to use the app. But when I do remote start the vehicle, um, it can take some time. And you do get it to, for instance, start your vehicle and send, send a notification back here. My phone's going to sleep. It can send a notification back here. Um, that can take some time as well. So basically what you do is you send the signal from your phone, your vehicle will react, and then the vehicle sends a signal back to your phone. And by the time you get notified, it can seem like it takes quite a while. There's no way around that, it is what it is. Um, and yeah, I would like it to improve. I don't know if it can or can't. So what we're gonna do is kind of go over the basics here and um, really quickly, if we're in the home page, so maybe I'll just go to the home page here. Um, oh, that's got everything there, so let's see. Home page kind of looks like that. Uh, what we can really do is when we start it out, there is a demo mode. So I'm assuming that you know how to uh, log into your system. Uh, the reason I'm not doing that is because some privacy information, I don't want to put my uh, email address and password up there for everybody on the internet forever. Um, but if you can log into this point, this is kind of where you're going to get, and this is really your main screen. Now, basically you can unlock and lock your car. You can honk the horn and the lights. You can start the engine, uh, sorry, you can start the engine here and you can cancel the engine start there and you can flash just your lights over here. Uh, so the flashing just your lights can be handy in a parking lot, especially with these LED lights that are super bright and my phone is gonna to continue to go to sleep here, so we're gonna to have to find a better way to do this. I'll keep touching my screen. One of the things I like is the top right-hand corner over here, vehicle status. If I click that, this is a screen I use quite a bit, and this is going to be different on different cars, and we'll show you that on the Kia side in a second, as well as on the um, electric vehicle side. So a green perimeter here, the green box, tells me that my car is locked, and it's kind of labeled here. If that was red, my car would be unlocked. And then green hood, green trunk, those kind of things. Uh, trunk is actually the trunk in my Santa Cruz, which is different than the tailgate. Uh, but then there's uh, the doors as well. So if one of those doors would open, they would be red. And uh, you can see this one actually labels, oh boy. This one actually labels my fuels at 70%. I got about three or seven kilometers to empty, which tells you my fuel mileage is not great right now. Eh, a lot of in-town driving. Down here, there's some alerts, smart key battery. If that goes low, washer fluid, brake oil or engine oil, <coughs> excuse me. So you do have um, some of these information. I don't have that on every vehicle. And of course, electric vehicles will be different. And then the windows, it'll tell you which one is open and closed right there. Before my phone goes to sleep, we'll do that again. I'm just gonna jump aside to the Kia one for a second and show you the same exact status. Um, my car is electric vehicle, so it's at 80% charge. 
I have the shorter range one, so that's 222 kilometers, obviously no time remaining, uh, doors are locked, vehicles locked, and then some of that other information isn't there. Um, depending on your vehicle, you're gonna have more and less information. The Santa Cruz is actually pretty good. It shows you quite a bit. Uh, the Kia Soul, this is a 2020 model, so there's potentially some less, and there's some differences with it being an electric vehicle. We're gonna jump back here. We're gonna X out of this uh, top right there, we're X out of that. Um, one of the things I like is you can just hit the engine start and that's the default settings. Now, if I go to engine start settings up there, which I'll do right now, you're gonna see it, I can add favorites and I've done that. So in this car, what I've done is winter with two people in it and winter with the driver only. And that's handy because I, it runs for 10 minutes. You can set it for between three and 10 minutes of remote start. I have the interior temperature going to 23 degrees. I have the defrost on front and rear. Heated seats are on as well. Um, but if I go to the add favor button, you can kind of see the things that I can do here. So uh, idling time, I can set it for three minutes to 10 minutes. The climate, I can set from low to high. Oops, if I can go there, maybe I can't. Oh, gotta turn the climate on there. So I turn that on and then I can set it from low to high. So we can set it for whatever we want. Front defrost will turn on. The rear side and back defroster, certain functions may not be available depending on your vehicle. So we can turn that on. Heated steering wheel, I would want that on. I'm gonna scroll down. Heated and cooled seats. Now I have this on my vehicle. My Kia Soul EV does not have the heated and cooled seats option. I can heat the steering wheel, but I can't heat the seats. Yeah, kind of weird, but that's the way it is. So heated and cooled seats, it works pretty well here. Uh, so let's pretend that we want the driver's seat to be heated. We'll hit the heat right there, that's one level two levels and three levels. I don't know if you can see, but all three lights uh, are, are lit. Cooling system, we'll just do two levels. So one, two. So the passenger seat's gonna have their seat cooled because, eh, why not? And the driver's seat will have their seat heated. So once you set that all up, you can hit the set here on the bottom and that is set on your car. And then that is, becomes a favorite. And you can change the name of the favorite by just typing in the name up top. Uh, so that's how I got to, we'll just leave it there for a second here. Winter with two people, winter with one person. Basically the only difference I do here is when it's just me, I'm only heating my seat. When it's two people in the car, because I can only heat the front seats, um, then I've got in the winter with heated seats front and rear. I haven't got a remote start setting for the summer. I don't tend to use it in the summer, uh, but you can customize those kinds of things. One thing we don't have on my car that you can have on some cars is there's an area to take pictures. And I forgot what it's called. We did a Kia Hyundai class earlier uh, about being able to take pictures with your car through your phone. Uh, something like the Kia Sorento and maybe other vehicles as well can use the surround view cameras, those four cameras on some of our cars. My car has it, but I don't have this ability. You can use those cameras to take pictures from the app. So that's one thing that's kind of cool. Um, so that's remote services. That's basically the key piece of this app. Uh, we're gonna go down here, cover the top uh, valet parking mode. We'll just glance at it for a second here. Uh, current valet mode, this is kind of cool because um, you can start it, ignition off, deactivation tells you when these things happen, tells you the top speed they went, the distance they drove and the total time. So that can be uh, useful. So you can turn that valet function on and off right from here or from the dash in your car, if your car has the valet mode there. Um, final destination guide, we sort of talked about that. Uh, let's see what it says. So yeah, so it shows that I'm here at work and we'll do that later. Um, there is no final destination, please try again. So if you set your navigation information in here, you can have walking distance. Find my vehicle, uh, no problem showing this. You're gonna have to enter a pin every now and then. Now sometimes it'll let you do the pin through your uh, face ID. Uh, I'm not gonna enter my pin for you here, but um, what it can do is, uh, whoops, sorry, we'll go back to here. What it can do is um, anytime you do remote engine start, those kind of things, you'll have to enter that pin number uh, just for an added layer of security. And again, with the um, location. So our, my vehicle happens to be here. And that's why we have that. Um, call roadside assistance, we're not gonna go there, but uh, you can do that. There's the number. I think you could just tap that and your phone um, comes up with that. Uh, let's go back. Uh, vehicle health status, it's gonna tell me everything's fine with my vehicle, or at least the better. Um, so this is not a full diagnostic system, but the idea is that the potential is there. You can see my preferred dealer is Brantford Hyundai on this vehicle, and all systems are normal. It can give you some warnings here. This is not the diagnostic system that your technician is gonna go through. So um, that's not, uh, you know, it's not the be all and end all, but it has a potential to do more obviously in the future. Um, dealer locator, you can just show different dealers. I think we'll just show you that. So of course it's showing where I am right now and the nearest dealer, it's gonna eventually come up with Brantford Hyundai is close by. Um, there we go, Brantford Hyundai is right close by. So we know that. And then we'll go down to notification center. Um, there's a ton of notifications you can do down here. 
Um, some of those are set up on the desktop better. No notifications that have sent to me. Notification history. These are things that have been sent. Again, fairly new cars, so there shouldn't be a whole lot of. Oh yeah. So this tells me when I did my engine start, I had a successful engine start. So everything that here. Uh, you can send it through a push notification, in other words, a notification to your phone, or you can get an email. You don't want to set up email for every time your engine starts, at least I don't think you do. Um, but various things you can set up for your monthly health report, I can send it to my email, um, those kind of things. So on my car, I have a monthly information that I get sent. So this is basically the Hyundai side, which is very, very similar to the Kia side. They call it Blue Link for Hyundai. And we'll go over to the Kia side because being the electric vehicle, you have some differences here. The very first thing, a climate button instead of a start button. So you're not technically remote starting the car, you're technically remote starting the climate. So unlock, lock, horn and lights, flash the lights. You can schedule. So let's hit the schedule for a second here. I don't want to change this on my car, uh, but I do have um, different times, kinds of uh, scheduling options here. And it, like I said, can take some time every now and then. Uh, oh boy, it's gonna take a while right now. But the idea is I can set up different schedules to charge my car based on peak hours, off peak hours. This may be because I don't have my car plugged in or my car is in the garage in my house, which can sometimes take an extra second to find it. Um, but you can schedule your charge time, schedule things like um, every day, let's say I come to work every day at eight o'clock, I can schedule it for a quarter to eight to turn on, preheat the car, pre-cool the car. And of course the benefit with an EV is you can do all of this while it's in the garage. And that's where I wanna show you some of my presets here. So again, same idea with the presets. I have a few less options on this car just because it has a few less options as a car. Uh, but we'll come in here, it's doing its thing. Speed of the app, something we have to deal with. Winter inside, winter outside, and summer. Now, because this is an electric car, I have it in my garage, but I can turn it on and preheat it while it's in the garage. So in that case, when it's inside in the winter, I don't need to defrost my windshield. It's probably just perfectly fine. Um, and then if it's outside, uh, my wife sometimes takes this car to work, or very often takes the car to work, and she doesn't have to uh, do anything. She can defrost the windshield and do all that uh, right here from the car. So a couple different settings. And again, because it's an EV, you can do some of these things inside. And that's why for me, some of those presets were handy. Overall, same basic stuff down here. Charge station locator is another thing that I have on an EV. It will show me the charge stations around us. To be very blunt, um, I tend to use the apps for the various charge station companies in our area. Um, I prefer them. This is an accurate one over by the Canadian Tire here near our place. Uh, that would be a, a level three charger. It tells you the type of charger down the bottom too, or the code for that charger. So um, there is some extra information in that. But basically those are the exact same thing. So again, remote services on the EV, whether it's Kia side, uh, Hyundai side, oh, charge and state of charge. So there's my charge right now. Uh, so it's at 80% and I have it set to charge only to 80%. So if it was charging, it would tell me how long it would take to charge, tell me the kilometers and the time remaining, that kind of thing. That's a helpful screen to sit on my living room couch, be lazy and go, is the car charged yet? And it'll see, well, it's only at 72%. It'll take a while to reach. In my case, I have it set to 80%. You might bring it to 100%, depends on what you wanna do. Um, but all that, the only thing I would caution everybody is when I go to the vehicle status up here, when you click vehicle status, um, November 24th, 2021 at 5.28 a.m. essentially is the last time checked. This time is very important. This doesn't give you real time. So you might look at it and say, oh, it's been, uh, you know, the car is locked for instance, but I'm gonna hit this refresh button right here. When I hit that refresh button, you're gonna see that it will correct to the current date. Now, again, this car is in the garage. The very first time it finds the car, it does take longer to find the car. Um, and that's why you're gonna see this delay here. In my garage, it has a little bit of a weaker signal for sure. Um, so that is gonna take it. But if you refresh this page, and actually maybe we'll just do it on the Hyundai side for a second, uh, go to the remote services, go to the vehicle status, and we'll refresh the page. This car is sitting outside, should happen quicker, a little different thing there. So again, 809 was the last time we checked. Again, it'll still take some time. And uh, actually to be fair, this building also insulates, but we're on Wi-Fi, it should work. Again, timing of this thing is my frustration with it. Um, this is real world stuff, guys. This is how it works. Um, usually it's much quicker than this, to be very fair. It might be our um, data usage in this building right now. But normally speaking, this time we'll update there. And um, <laughs> wow, again, this one's not doing anything because I have the app closed, but let's just, oh, we can't even stop that right now. So we'll let it do its thing. And uh, there we go. So it's refreshed now to 1027, it's 1027 right now. Uh, so again, it can take some time and that can be frustrating, uh, but it does work very well. 
that is kind of the basics of Blue Link. What used to be known as Uvo Intelligence is now known as Kia Connect. You're gonna to go to uh, the App Store if you're on an Apple phone and you're in Canada. You're gonna make sure that it says Hyundai Canada, Kia Canada, and it's Kia Connect now for uh, the Kia. It's um, Blue Link for Hyundai, and it will come with your new vehicle. For most vehicles now, when I bought my vehicle, it's free for five years. That was when I bought the Kia Soul, 2019, I actually bought it. Uh, my Santa Cruz I bought in 2022, it's free for three years. And the very first question everybody asks me is, well, how much is it gonna cost? And I have no idea. And part of that is because they're still adding features, changing features, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's still a whole set of stuff you can do within the dash of this as well, but this is really what most people are using it for, is um, using it on the app. So I don't know what pricing will be. I have a feeling they'll have package prices when it comes out, and when that comes out, we'll cover it on this channel. So that's kind of a long, but maybe not in detail enough tutorial of what these apps do. If you have questions, ask me below in the comments below. Um, leave me a positive comment if you thought this was at all helpful, and uh, we'll continue the conversation. We do videos like this every single day. Where we're trying to help users of Kia and Hyundai vehicles. We're also helping buyers as well. If you're looking to buy a car half an hour every day at two o'clock Eastern time, we do a live video where we go through a vehicle in detail. Um, if you have a Kia Hyundai, if you're interested in Kia Hyundai, hit the subscribe button. We'll do everything we can to keep you informed. But there's the basics. Hyundai Blue Link, Kia Connect uh, app. Uh, they're pretty good other than the time it takes to do stuff. And uh, it's kind of the way of the future. So you can connect your car to your uh, phone and that's how it works. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one.